I start the day by taking care of my farming plots. Knowing that Maria is alive and out there is good, but I still need to keep doing my daily duties and learning new skills. After lunch, I start reading books on aiming. My ax has carried me far, but the sprinters are starting to overwhelm me with numbers, so I'll need to start using the shotgun I found to keep them at bay. Together with the aiming skill, I'll also need reloading, so that's the next skill I focus on. After shaving, I begin inspecting the spots 12 I found earlier for any issues, based on what I've read in the books. I upgraded with whatever attachments I have, namely a silencer, shell holder and improved iron sights. I do the same for the G17, knowing that there will come a time where I find myself in a tight spot and need to reload the shells. And then, go to town with this setup, give it a whirl. So far, so good. But I'd better get out of the car with my shotgun in hand, to avoid having to run away immediately. I still have a few items I would like to find, mostly magazines and long johns, as winter will come and I would rather be nice and warm outside. So my search for the item starts by going door to door like a desperate salesman, all the while honing my aiming skills and reloading. Taking advantage of the low population of Rosewood that I've been thinning out for the past three months. Getting spooked along the way as my aiming skills truly show how bad I am at shooting moving targets, often missing point blank shots. I set up some traps as I'm running low on fresh meat, and continue my shooting training while looting the town. Returning to my old place, I gather anything I would like to take back to my new home. Finally realizing that not only that I have the light switch magazine on the shelf upstairs, but I already read the manual before this whole thing started. Surviving in this new world has taken its toll on my mind. At this point, I can rest assured that if I tried to fight the big heart, I would die fast, as I can't even hit the standing target. As I make my way to the car to head back home, I spot the grave that was previously hidden by the trees when I first arrived. Just like Oliver's grave, there's a kern and a note on top of it. I can only assume this grave was made for Liam's body, given its position. After reading the note, I'm left with so many questions. Why would Maria assume Liam was me? I understand that by the time she buried them, the decomposition state of the body would make it hard to identify. Is this why she came to Rosewood? To put us to rest? Didn't she think it was weird somebody buried Oliver? And is she infected? Wouldn't she be immune as well? Or has she been bitten? Where is she? I keep finding breadcrumbs, but no definite path to take. As it gets colder, the first signs of snow show up, and the trees are looking pretty as well. I hope Maria will be able to see this one day. I harvest my first batch of carrots, this will make it easier to trap rabbits. Although, I don't have that much space for all this produce, I'll have to find a bigger fridge for this. I go and check my traps for rabbits, and it looks like I got something in four of them. Thankfully I caught a rabbit, but in three of them, instead of rabbits, I found kittens. Poor little things must have been starving and got caught in the traps, explaining why so many traps just came out empty. I decide to become a crazy cat lady and adopt them all. I leave two of them at home doing cat things and make a little pocket on my clothes to carry the lighter one, as it looks like it needs some special attention being so small. This company will fend off some of the boredom and loneliness I feel as well. I spend the rest of this rainy day reading about farming. As the days get colder, I force myself to sleep with more clothes. I wish I could be more comfortable, but this will have to do for now.
I um, kind of broke the electrical switch while I remodeled the bedroom. And knowing how to do electrical switches, all I need now is the experience with it. I tinker with the TV to gain the experience needed, but fall short, as there is only so much I can learn from it, and then read the book for the appropriate skill level that I'm currently on. I start my day by checking the trees. I must admit, they make me happier than I expected, especially now that they are blooming. Afterward, I check the town for more loot. I can't stress enough how much I want to find some long johns to sleep in at night. That together with some heating would make for a much more comfortable sleep. I search through most of the houses down south and clear out most of the zombies. However, one of them catches me off guard, which makes me glad I invested so much time in tailoring. It happened too quickly for me to notice. Yet again, I come home empty-handed. I spend the day cooking and reading the next books on naming and reloading. I finish checking the last few houses and make my way to the northern side of Rosewood. On the way there, I notice a trailer in pretty rough shape. It's the only trailer I've found so far, so I decide to add it to my to-do list, even though it's too big for my car. I start exploring the houses and come across a computer that might help me expand my electrical skills along with a dumbbell and a fitness contraption. Next door, I find a fridge, so I grab that bad boy since I need one. I grab the loot I found and come back home, noticing I am being followed. Not wanting my gate to be destroyed again, I take the fight to my neighbor's yard, feeling fortunate that sidewalks are natural enemies to sprinters, missing my first shot and nearly getting bit, but managing to hit it eventually. I place down the things I found so I can work on them later. I'm disappointed with the computer I brought in because it's full of proprietary hardware and I can't tinker with it since the unit is built in a company specific way, making it a prime candidate for my dumpster. And then a few more bits and bobs to make the place feel homey and get a well-earned rest while reading my last book on how to be nimble. Today is a simple day for me. I'm going to retrieve my recently acquired gas cans and fill them all up, followed by sorting out the rest of my loot. As a storm hits, I decide to stay at home. I've never been scared of storms, going out whenever I wanted. But nowadays, with the added danger of zombies, I simply prefer to stay in. I couldn't quite make out what the radio was saying, but I believe this storm will be over by tomorrow. As such, I decide to stay at home and read the last book on maintenance, along with all the magazines I still haven't read, and the VHSs that can teach me something. Despite the heavy rain, I harvest my fresh produce and put as much of it as I can into the fridge for later. It's so satisfying to be able to enjoy fresh fruit like this. It's amazing how the things you once took for granted can bring you so much happiness during times of scarcity. I return to town in search of tires to get that big trailer in decent enough condition to move. I find the van and decide to take its tires, thinking I can convert them for use on the trailer. However, upon returning home, I discovered that they are not the correct type of tires I need. Disappointed but not giving up, I construct a tire rack and store the tires there in case they are needed in the future. I resume my search for a larger truck, eventually finding one and retrieving its tires instead. After repairing them, I eat a couple of bananas and then head to bed. The next day, I grab the tires and attach them to the trailer bringing it back to base for a more thorough repair. Then I grab my shotgun and take it for a test drive. With the slippery road and the trailer half as heavy as my car, things don't look promising. As the intersection into Rosewood is overrun by zombies, I decide to take action, knowing it will only become worse over time. 
lifting all the sprinters run towards me makes my knees tremble. But the shotgun takes care of most of them. I nearly panic when I have to reload, but I remember to grab the handgun to finish the job. This is good practice for later, I'm sure. As time goes on, I need to make better and faster decisions in this. It looks like more than half of the zombies are now sprinters. I'd be lying if I said I'm confident I can survive this. I've created such a cozy place to live that I often forget how dangerous things are out here. Having cleared the intersection, I come back home and park the trailer as it isn't fit for purpose. Maybe if I get a truck, but then I'll worry about not having the horsepower to get me out of tricky situations. I park the trailer next door and settle down for the night. I read another aiming book and I'm slowly getting better at this. However, I'd say I'm only about halfway there, as I still need targets to be relatively close in order to land a good shot with the handgun. I finish the day by repairing the damage the trailer did the previous day. After that, as I head up to my man cave, I notice wall vines starting to creep up, obstructing my view outside. It's time to clear them out. That's better. I start reading a book on farming before going to sleep. Despite the fog, I decide to explore the last few houses in Rosewood. The number of sprinters is truly intimidating now. As I arrive at the houses, I prepare myself to confront the horde trailing me. Thankfully, the silencers I found should help keep me quiet. Upon inspection, I find all the doors and windows locked shut. This house must be alarmed, I think to myself. Despite this, my greed gets the better of me, and I break a window to satisfy my greed for loot. So much for being quiet, all because I couldn't resist the temptation of some cozy jammies. A zombie came too close to me from behind, but my jacket took the hit. Another two nearly got to me with surprise attacks, but in the end, I'm left unharmed. Shaking from the adrenaline flowing through my veins as I begin my looting spree. But besides food and some more guns and ammo, I didn't find the elusive long johns. So I grabbed whatever decorations I could together with more food. As I do, I dispatch the remaining zombies in the vicinity. It's almost comical how they stumble about, forgetting their purpose as they were drawn to the alarm. Feeling like I have reached peak nimble agility while exploring the last house, I grab the last bits of loot I find and head back home. Now seeing the amount of damage I inflicted on the zombie population around this neighborhood as I make my way out, I can't shake the feeling that this wasn't right, despite it being my only choice to survive. I start out my loot before going to sleep, getting ready to explore somewhere else tomorrow. In the morning, I tend to my plans before hopping into the car. Today's mission? Riverside, in search of those elusive long johns. With plenty of houses to search and a variety of shops, including clothing stores, I'm hopeful I'll find what I need. Navigating through the hordes, I'm determined to keep my car intact. By the time I reach Riverside, dust casts a shadow over the town. After a brief search, I find refuge in the gated house, prioritizing safety in these challenging times. Once indoors, I hastily scan the premises before succumbing to sleep. Days blur together as I scavenge house after house, hoping to uncover the long johns. My routine is simple, loot, stash, move on and repeat until exhaustion claims me. It's a relentless cycle, 
but necessary to secure East Riverside. Despite my efforts, the Long Johns remain elusive. With a heavy heart, I turn my attention to downtown, bracing myself for whatever challenges lie ahead. The biting cold greets me as I step outside, each snowflake a reminder of the harsh winter. The frigid air seems to seep into my bones with every gust of wind, chilling me to the core. I press on, my breath turning to mist in the frozen atmosphere, a constant reminder of the dangers that surround me. With a cold sweat dripping down my face, I press on towards the town center, preparing myself for whatever comes next. I navigate down a quiet side street, dodging the undead horde as I meticulously clear the area. With each fallen zombie, the dawn's light reveals the grim reality of the situation, urging me to move on swiftly. The bookstore is packed with books, but I already have copies of all of them. Next, I peek into a toy store, hoping to find some collectibles to make my place feel cozier. Scarred a couple of those adorable Spiffos plushies. Heading to the office next door, I stumble upon a computer that seems suitable for owning my electric skills. In the next door, I find the place swarmed with zombies. After dispatching them, I discover it's another toy store where I can snag some more collectibles. I clear a path to a closed door in the hope of finding what brought me here in the first place. But nope, the darn long johns are playing hard to get. I make my way to the next clothes shop, pushing through zombies as I go. In the first store, I spot a useful hockey helmet. Finally, in the next one, I find the long johns I've been hunting for. Well, half of them at least. That's a win in my book. As the sun reaches its peak at 2 o'clock, I sense a faint warmth seeping through the clouds. Clearing the vicinity of the VHS star, I prepare to raid it for some much needed entertainment, preserving it for the future. As fresh TV content becomes scarce, every find becomes a precious commodity. Afterwards, I take a look around town looking for a trailer I can use, or any signs of survivors in the area. Stopping to check the locations out, only to encounter more decaying zombies at every turn. This place feels like a death trap with so many zombies inside the house. Feeling my eyes grow heavy and fatigue setting in, I push through fueled by adrenaline. Making one last sweep of the streets I haven't yet checked, I head back to the gated area. It's time for a well-deserved rest after a day of relentless zombie shooting. Heading back to the houses, I check them out, reflecting on how this whole endeavor felt like a high-risk, low-reward situation. The numerous close calls and the looming sense of impending doom in the last few days outweighed any potential comfort the pajama bottoms could offer. Alas, what's done is done, I have to plan things better from here on out. Eagerly returning to Rosewood, I tend to my crops harvesting what's ready, watering them, and spending the day organizing the new loot. After all these tiring days, I finally take the time to wash myself clean. Resting for the next couple of days, I immerse myself in further reading about aiming and reloading, drawing from the ample experience gained during my time in Riverside. Following that, it's a matter of gaining some electrical experience to get the lights on in the bedroom and taking care of the heating upstairs. 
After crafting the light switches, I realize I'm running out of electrical wire, so I need to keep my eyes open for more. Feeling pleased with my new lighting system, I spent the rest of the day reading a book on farming. And as I head to bed, relieved to finally spare my toes from the bed's corner, I make sure to turn off the light before falling asleep. The next day, as the snow starts to fall more consistently, I make sure to bundle up in warmer clothes. I opt for the heavy insulated police helmet and some skinny leather trousers I found in Riverside. They don't look great on me, but I'll give it a shot. I start by cleaning my shotgun, removing all the gun kit gathered during my last trip and repairing any damage. Additionally, I reinforce the new trousers for added protection. While the lower parts of my body aren't as well protected as I'd like, with the absence of crawlers, I'll hope for the best, as my groin is not fully protected. I go for a quick test run of my new equipment, and oh boy, am I glad I did before I embark on any other adventures. These pants are terrible. My balls are literally cooking in there, and my legs are itchy as fuck. Besides the fact they looked ugly, I can't compromise looks to a certain extent, but nope, this is a terrible idea. I come back home and immediately switch them off for something more comfortable. Oof, that's so much better. And despite the cold, the helmet is too warm together with the rest of my gear, so I'll be wearing the hockey helmet for now. As the day ends, I read the last book on aiming. I start the day by grabbing all the juicy, tasty new produce I have. My goodness, I'm going to get through this without needing to take vitamin supplements. Blast. And then it was time to get the car repaired for all the damage it suffered. Poor little guy hung in there really well. At the end of the day, I read the trapping book, and I'll be able to build my own trap boxes for small animals. After finishing the book, I head downstairs to check on the trees. The weather looks decent too. Well, cold, but at least it's not wet. And wouldn't you know it, I jinx it. I decide to stay in, reading a strength book in the man cave. With the bedroom light on, I read about fitness before I turn in for the night. After finishing the fitness book, I make sure to check on the generators for maintenance. Can't afford to forget like I did before. Since the weather isn't cooperating, I just keep on reading. Nothing else I can do. But I figure bad weather will start being a constant from here on out. So I prepare a poncho to go out in rainy days like this. I get a haircut, gear up and listen to the weather prediction while I do a last minute check on the car. And just like that. Now that I'm ready for rain, it's not raining. I get changed and move out. As the days grow darker, I'm thinking about adding some lights to my backyard. Plus, I really need an AC unit to keep me warm at night in the bedroom. So I head up to Doe Valley again and search for it. Still haven't checked out the tool shop there, so I might be able to find something. I find more tools and crafting materials, along with a couple of floodlights. Then I do a run around town looking for an AC unit, but unfortunately I didn't get my hands on one. So I return home again feeling half empty handed. I set up the lights, now noticing the overgrown grass all over the place much better. I'll leave it for future me to worry about. I spend most of my day repairing the car to a near brand new state and the rest of the day reading about first aid. You never know, maybe bandaging myself faster might actually help me survive one of these days. I sure have already bandaged myself a lot. Past me left this task for me to do, so today's the day. I found a brand new wood axe for the job. Surprisingly, the trees weren't even the issue. It was the sheer amount of grass all over the place. It's not much, but it's honest work. 
and it looks damn fine now. Picking up some oranges, I get my dose of vitamin C, a nice change from the lemons to be honest. Not that I've been eating them, but using them in stir fries. As I start the oranges, I notice I'm running low on meat, so I go and place a few more traps for bunnies. Clearing up the place of twigs and wood for the oven, which will keep me warm. I settle down to watch TV in my cozy living room. I start by checking the traps, and it looks like half of them caught something. That's quite a lot of meat for a while. I pick up the traps to use on a later date. The garden is looking really nice now, especially with all the blooming trees. While I wait for the radio weather report, I read the book. It looks like it will be cold, but no snow or rain. So I guess I'm safe to go out exploring. I head back to the warehouses as I'm sure I saw a few AC units in there before. I grab a couple of them and head back home. Oh, well, that's awkward. I kind of forgot I need to be on the outside to install this. I mean, I can install it like this, but that's not ideal. Plus, I'll need access to it in order to turn it on and control its temperature. I guess I'll have to do more remodeling. As it's late, I'll read a book on sprinting. Today, I start by collecting wood for my new renovation project. I need an extension in order to install the AC unit and be able to control this temperature without risking falling over and injuring myself. I move the rack out of the way, and it looks like I'll have to remove this light switch. Unfortunately, I can't replace it yet, due to the lack of electric wiring, but I'll look for it later. I put up the wall to divide the bedroom, then I plaster and paint the walls, getting everything ready for tomorrow's building work. After building the balcony, I place the AC unit and install rails to prevent any accidents. Then I add a few pillars on the ground level for support. After a long day of work, I finally reap the rewards of my labor. All of this effort pays off in the form of comfortable sleep. I slip into my long johns and enjoy a balmy 21 degrees Celsius as I drift off to sleep. Having heard that gunshot, together with seeing the snow, it somehow reminded me there is an army depot not too far away from here. That should have plenty of army weapons and clothes for the winter. So that is my mission for today. As I get closer, it hits me how risky this spot is. Sprinters are swarming all around. I swiftly get out of the car and do my best to handle the first wave of them. But as I need to reload and realize I'm being surrounded, I bolt to create some space, aiming to tackle them from just one direction. I slowly make my way back into the depot, each shot feeling like a heavier recall than the last. Night falls, and by the time I reach the safety of the depot, exhaustion washes over me like a wave. I grab one of the tents and drag my feet to the back storage room, eager for sleep. I begin clearing out the place of all the items I need. Shotgun shells, 556 rounds, silencers, weapon parts, bag upgrades, and finally, some long johns. I also find a winter hat and a set of warmer and colder weather clothes, including another pair of long johns. It makes me feel like the journey to Riverside was just a waste of time. I didn't manage to find a decent rifle here, but the loot was more than worth it. After clearing out everything I wanted, I make my way home, soaring through all the loot and finally satisfying my craving for those long johns by slipping into them for a well-deserved sleep.
I spend my day picking out new clothes more suitable for the weather, tailoring them to suit my needs, cooking and harvesting my crops. Then I read the last book on farming and check the car for damage in preparation for my next trip. As for my next trip, I have no settled destination yet. I want to explore more while focusing on finding more about the virus, but haven't had any luck in the areas and houses I've looked in so far, aside from that burned up note in the doctor's office. Maybe I should target military areas first? They seem to be involved in the cover-up. I'll take a look at my annotated maps for the Marsh Ridge area as it is a small gated military town. Hold up! How long have I had this map? Survivors? Christ! How did I overlook this? I could have been with people all this time? But wait, what if it is a trap? What if it is inhabited by cannibals or some such horror? I got to be careful. I'll write down any other points of interest on the map just in case this is another dead end. That nearby school is where Maria worked. If there's a place that might hold a clue about where she is, that be it. I start prepping to go there for a few days. Today, I check the generators, into the plants, and load the car with extra ammo. The weather seems clear enough, so I'll risk it and head out today. I get ready, refuel the car, and make my way to March Ridge. As I drive into town, the place looks beyond saving. If there are survivors here, they must be struggling big time to face these hordes, because the town seems untouched, much like Riverside did. I try to park my car next to the building, but instead of driving a little to test the waters, I just hop out. Overconfidence is a slow but insidious killer I fought to myself as I ran desperately away from the sprinters. Turning around to shoot whenever I could. Caught between two hearts, I turn to face my pursuers and almost get bitten for it. Regaining my composure, I confront them on my own terms and make my way towards the road. That's when I slip up, and an alarm goes off. Oh! I step back, pressing against the wall, waiting for any stragglers that might find me in their rush towards the alarm. Then I cautiously advance against the concentrated heart. There must be a hundred zombies between me and the apartment building. I start slow and steady, piling up the streets with so many of them, feeling sick from the nauseating smell. Gradually, I push forward as night falls, clearing the area around the building. It feels like this building is going to be my death sentence, with no one coming out to help me. It must be infested itself. As I force open the doors, a sliver of hope remains. There is no one on the ground floor, but there are no zombies neither. After thinking about it, they would barricade themselves on the top floors. But as I arrive on the third floor, all hope is lost. For some odd reason, there are no zombies or people around. What happened here? This is the first building I found that is completely empty. 
I go to sleep pondering how something like this could happen. I spend the rest of the day exploring the apartments, searching for loot and any clues about what happened. This place is stocked with loot, like they were gearing up for war. Ammo, crafting materials, M16s, an M60, several katanas and machetes. I didn't grab most of them, as they'd probably get me killed against sprinters and there's enough food here to last a lifetime. But there are no clues as to where all these people who brought in these items are, or what happened to them. It doesn't look like they turn, as the apartments are eerily empty. I start everything I want in the car, leaving plenty behind. Maybe I'll come back to make this place a base, as it seems I could live here for months without struggling. Making my way to the school, I immediately notice a group of zombies at the door. Why? Is someone inside? Looking around the school, I find what you'd expect. Some stationary items, but eerily, no dossiers or staff paperwork. Even weirder, every single locker in the school is empty. No toys, books, pens, nothing. What happened in this town? All I found inside were a couple of zombies that looked like they were teachers before. Could the children have been evacuated before the virus struck, leaving behind the teachers? Maybe as the military were informed of this situation, it enabled them to take their kids to safety, but left everyone else behind. Perhaps they fortified themselves in the apartments and moved somewhere else when they started feeling overwhelmed. But where would they go, leaving so much behind? I take a look at the community center for any literature I'm still missing, though I have to clear the hearts that came for me in the meantime taking me most of the day to do it safely. In the end, it's worth it, as I managed to find a compilation with all the books necessary to make car parts. And since it's late, I decide to spend one more night at the apartments, reading all the new books before going to sleep. In the morning, I decide to take one last tour around March Ridge before I leave. Not only to check for any signs of survivors, but also to find a usable trailer. I try to pass through every street once to check it out, even taking shortcuts through paths I wasn't sure my car could handle. And bingo, that's exactly what I needed something my car can pull easily. The trailer itself looks to be in good enough condition for me to drive out of here, so I make my way back to Rosewood. I get a little more comfortable and start organizing my loot. The car was full to the brink so it takes me all day to get it started. As a reward, I do a light switch since I found so much electric wiring in the apartments, bringing new light to my corridor. And finally have a good night's sleep after all that has happened in the last few days. I spend the whole day in the garage, tinkering away at the trailer and car, took him apart, piece by piece, made sure every bolt was tight and every wire was right. By the time I put them back together, they were like new. Got lost in the rhythm of it all, just me and the smell of oil hanging heavy in the air. It's a good feeling, taking charge of something, even if it's just machines. But in a world where everything's falling apart, making sure these wheels keep turning feels like a small victory. After that, I move on to some weapon upgrades. I've got this M16 rifle I found earlier. 
so I slap on a silencer, a sling and some better sights. Then it's just a matter of cracking out a bunch of bullets for it. By the end of the day, I give it a test run to make sure everything's working just right. It snowed all night, but as the temperature rises a bit, the rain washes it all away. I update my map before planning my next journey. Since big cities seem to have been cleared out of clues, I turn my attention back to Doe Valley. It's rural enough that I might be able to find something in the doctor's office there. I'm running out of ideas for where else to look for clues. The route to Doe Valley is getting tougher, with more trees crowding around the area near Blackwood. I've been steering clear of it since it's heavily quarantined. Clearing a path through there would take days of work and pose a huge risk. I'll leave that problem for future me to deal with when the time comes. I also stop frequently to clear the roads a bit, using the opportunity to get used to my new weapon. I secure an area around the house as best as I can and take a moment to read a magazine, relieving some pressure before settling down to sleep. It seems winter has officially started, with piles of snow all over the place. Fortunately, I'm prepared for winter now and can keep on going. I make my way into the doctor's office. The front door has been broken, probably a zombie trying to get out. I search the place thoroughly for notes or reports. Among the finds are some bandages, and while rifling through a file cabinet, I discover plenty of untouched medical reports. Even from the week when the virus broke out, I sift through them until I locate what looks like the first occurrence of the virus in Doe Valley. It detailed the case of a man named Michael Harris, who presented with high fevers and altered mental status. What caught my attention were the peculiar symptoms described, rapid cognitive decline, confusion, and signs of agitation. The report mentioned various diagnostic possibilities, including viral encephalitis and bacterial meningitis. But what stood out was the mention of samples being sent to the FRG for further analysis. This got me thinking, who are these FRG and where are they located? Unfortunately, Communication with the CDC was unavailable at the time due to technical difficulties, leaving many questions unanswered. The prognosis for the patient remained guarded, highlighting the uncertainty and urgency surrounding the situation. This discovery sheds light on the early days of the virus outbreak, offering a glimpse into the challenges faced by medical professionals during those turbulent times, and giving me a clue to where the samples were sent. It's dated June 2nd, which means they had plenty of time to warn people, whoever they are, raising my suspicion of their involvement, as no one ever mentioned them in the news. Could the FRG hold answers to the virus origins? They seem to hold authority in the region for biosamples. I need to find out who they are and where they are located. It's silly. After all the times that I've come here, I never thought to stop at the clinic to check it out. Kind of feel dumb now. I wonder how many other places I might have shrugged off looking into that could have clues. I checked the rest of the town and I found a car with parts I'm missing. After snatching them for myself, I head back home. I start repairs when I get home pondering over what I've learned and racking my brain for options on how to find FRG. Once the repairs are done, I find myself staring at my map, searching for ideas. Then, suddenly, it hits me. What about the other clinics that were set up as temporary measures in Rosewood to handle the infection? I drop the trailer and make my way to the nearest clinic. After clearing the area, it's night time and I approach it carefully. But all I found was military supplies.
Moving on to the next, I'm faced with the same items. What else can I do? I remember the travel agency where they keep maps and plenty of phone books. If FRG is someone who deals with biosamples instead of CDC, they should be a registered company. It's worth a shot. I do a quick sweep of the place, and as I look closely at one of the desks, I spot the phone book. Bingo! FRG can stand for Finnegan Research Group, and from its area code, they seem to be somewhere in Louisville. It's a big city, with a lot of places to sift through. I'd have to spend some serious time there to make any progress. Restarting from scratch means leaving my cozy base behind, and that sucks so much, right when it's become so comfy. But I need to know, I can't just leave it as it is. I pick out a spot that looks promising, it's not smack dab in the center of town. Instead, it's a forested area with a lake nearby and a gas station just at the end of the street. I come back home and start preparing for the trip, or rather, a new start. I gather all the weapons I deem necessary, along with plenty of ammo and some melee weapons, just in case, and start loading the trailer. Next, I collect all types of tools that I might need to start up a base, along with some extras in case any break and I don't have the means to repair them yet. I also pack a variety of crafting materials, seeds and seedlings for self-sustainability, as well as all-year-round clothing and some books I still have to read. And finally, I add some decorations to liven up the new place once I'm settled, along with a couple of generators to get me started. I'm not going to risk leaving them on unattended. All that's left is to collect enough stones to start a new furnace when I get to Louisville. Afterwards, I enjoy one last night in this house that has protected me from the horrors outside so well for the past few months. I can't help but feel a bit of apprehension, wondering if this is the right thing to do, and whether or not I should stay until the end of winter. In the morning, not letting my initial resolve go to waste, I attach my trailer to the car and start driving to Louisville. The car feels sluggish, bearing nearly double the weight it's accustomed to. Passing through Moldro, I witness the incredible damage my late workplace town endured and how the increased population affected the area. West Point is even worse ranking as the third most populated area after Louisville and Raven Creek. It forces me to stop and perform some quick repairs on the car. If it's this bad here, I can't imagine what Louisville will be like. But I won't have to wonder. I'll be seeing it with my own eyes later tonight. As I get close to the city, I come across my first blockade. I immediately get out of the car, ready to defend myself, panicking as I feel surrounded. I run to the forest, trying to find a moment to grab my pistol. I nearly get caught in the process, forcing me to run deeper into the unknown to find enough time to strike back. I slowly make my way back, ensuring my surroundings are clear, and carefully clear the blockade. Not wanting a repetition of what happened before, I get out of the car to cover my back. This isn't the quarantine area I kept seeing in the news with all the reporters speaking.
as I reach the checkpoint that I saw on TV. I use the fact that it's a dead end to my advantage and make my way in easily, noticing the camera and stage they use to make the announcements. It feels weird seeing it like this. A place that was once so full of life, now just full of the dead remains of it. The refugee camp is desolate, and the site looks horrendous to live in. Given that the infection is airborne, it's not surprising it's spread like wildfire. I make my way to the place I want it to be, but as it's getting dark, I try to secure a place to stay for the night. I circle around the neighborhood to attract them out of the way, but I struggle with the rest as I forgot to reload my rifle. I try to escape the horde, their grasping hands clutching at my clothes. In desperation, I push myself to jump across the fence, heart pounding with panic, then go back to ensure I have enough time to shoot safely. Eventually, I find a bed to sleep in. I finally reach the street I've been aiming for and immediately begin clearing the area. Afterward, I make my way into the field where I plan to build my new forward base. I shout loudly to attract any unwanted visitors during my time here. After dealing with the first wave, I secure a house that is infested by zombies. I gather whatever food supplies I can find to get started in this area. With plenty of buildings around, I shouldn't have any immediate issues with food or other necessities. As night falls, I settle down to sleep, missing the cozy space I left behind. However, my focus now shifts to making a new space here. One that is just as good, if not better, than what I had before. Oof, that was a big one. Thank you so much for watching the video and for all the support you've shown in the comments. A very special shout out to my patron, Jack. Your help with OBS settings and the Discord server has been incredibly helpful. I truly appreciate it, mate. Speaking of which, you can find the Discord link on the channel page or in the video description. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.